So if you've been persecuted for the last two, three hundred years, you as a group, and here's your chance to actually make it, here's your chance to actually do something about it, well then, you take that chance. And they did. All right. Now I'll continue. In 451, a further council of Chalcedon resolved the controversy surrounding the definition of the person of Christ. Not Jesus, but Christ. The Christos, the Messiah. In the final edict we read, we confess one and the same. Our Lord Jesus Christ, the same perfect in Godhead, the same perfect in manhood, truly God, truly man, the same of a rational soul and body. Okay? Godhead, perfect man, Lord. Okay? Kyrios, Lord. Now all of these things here are meant to give him a certain title. And he has it, according to this new theology that is developing. Later in the Western Church, Augustine and Ambrose were to define the Trinity in the same manner as the Cappadocian Fathers. That's Augustine and Ambrose. Both of these early fathers of the Church made an outstanding contribution to the development of the Christian theology and exerted a commanding influence on all the theological questions of their age. Please keep this in mind. A commanding influence. Now what the heck is a bishop in Hippo, in the middle of nowhere, in Libya, having such authority, a commanding, commanding ideas, commanding, uh, commanding writings? And Ambrose in Milan. Why is it that we do not hear about Rome, about Jerusalem, about Antioch, about Alexandria. How come we don't hear about these places? And yet we hear about this remote area of Hippo. Augustine. Augustine. Who the hell is he? Who is this guy? And yet he wrote volumes and volumes and volumes, responses, questions, back and forth. He is the mainstream Christian. And he actually represents what was truly going on in the early 4th century. In the, sorry, the mid, and mid to late 4th century. And that's typical. You want to understand Canada, you go to a small town to understand Canada. Not just Toronto, not just Montreal, not just Vancouver. We do the same thing. Augustine was in this outpost, in the middle of nowhere, and not even an important place. And yet he maintained a relationship with Ambrose. And he wrote profusely. He wrote an awful lot. He had secretaries that would write for him, and he would just continuously talk. And he was a great rhetorician, by the way. He knew how to argue very well. Pagans were extremely entertained by this man. They'd actually show up to church, and they would listen to him. And he'd browbeat them. He'd do that naturally, and he'd listen. Now, whether they believed him or not, that's something else. Whether they agreed with him, we don't know. But he made his point, and these points were very good. And they were kept, and they were kept in volumes. In fact, modern-day scholars cannot live long enough to read everything this man has ever written. It, it just cannot be done. That's how much has been written. And recently, uh, recently as in like 1993 onwards, we've had the Dolbe sermons. These were discovered by this famous scholar, D-O-L-B-E-A-U, Dolbe. And he wrote about these, he <coughs> translated them, and they were specific to the time around the year 400 A.D. Or C E. And what was interesting is that here he talks to the pagans specifically about the new year. And it's very interesting what he has to say in there. And this is where you really get to the heart of the mature Augustine. Very interesting stuff where he where he deals with a lot of issues. 